you pulled me in when I had given up. You never quit when I couldn't trust you. You proved me wrong when I was a stranger. You brought me home when I couldn't reach you. You pulled me in when I had given up. You never quit when I couldn't trust you. You proved me wrong. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Pastor Tom here from Sonora. Uh, why is it significant to be here? Sonora, California. Because what we're doing here after Epiphany is we're looking at Matthew chapter 3, which gets into what makes us okay, what makes us acceptable. Uh, using the translation as it is written in Matthew chapter 3, we hear about righteousness. It's incredibly important for our lives and what brings uh, us to get to a place of being okay. Now, it's, it's not a matter of God giving us a bunch of rules to live by, and if you do this, then you can get the reward of saying, well, you're a righteous person. It's how does God deal with this issue with us? How does he give us this? And that's where Christianity changes all the way around. Now, we're going to look at two. Uh, some people say, well, I don't need that in my life. I got it. I'm just going to declare myself good, or, and there's a folly to that that uh, we will bring out. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the text here today. I got a picture of me and my fourth grade teacher. It's kind of strange. I met somebody in Hawaii, I think, who uh, was a teacher at the school I went to and knew all these people. They had a gathering, so I went to the gathering, and after almost over 50 years, um, I met Mrs. Wong, okay? I never even knew Mrs. Wong's first name, but I found out there at this gathering, and it's Trudy. <laughs> Now, Ms. Wong was a little scary to me, and it was interesting. She, I, she actually she didn't remember me, but she said, uh, were you afraid of me? And I said, yeah, because <laughs> she was known to be a tough teacher. She used to say, well, I'm gonna, we're going to whack you with a wet noodle if you don't uh, get this straight, or if she's asking you a question that she's trying to teach. Um, but there was this, after so many years, there's still this feeling of, she was the teacher, I was the young student, and so that you still see that. And I don't know what it's like for you, you know, if you go back and see your teachers again, and, you know, you learn your first name. Actually, this wasn't even at Mrs. Wong's uh, house. This was at another teacher that I had uh, in second grade. It was Mrs. Gatlin, and, you know, today it's like, well, there's Gina. <laughs> but it still seems like, oh, Gina, what, you know, what, what, you know. That... What's the point here is that the point of life is that we have some people above us and there's a, a sense of a distance and that also it has to do with the one who's above us is meant to understand and know more than we are and then we use terms uh, 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 when we speak to them with their uh, titles. And so when we're looking at righteousness, it's the same thing. It, it has the idea of something greater than ourselves. And John the Baptist, in the text here today, he, uh, knew that there was a righteousness greater than himself. 
So then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, um, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? So it was an awkward position for John. I mean, because he knew that this is the Messiah. I think later on he had some struggles with this after he was arrested and he started to second guess himself. We've seen texts like that in the past. But here, uh, John is struggling. And that uh, Jesus had even proclaimed that there is no greater human being upon the planet earth who is greater than John. This guy was connected to God. He had a righteousness. He had a dedication to God. But he knew Jesus was greater than himself. And that is the first key issue with getting righteousness from God. That every human being, we were designed to know that there is something greater than ourselves. That there's something outside of ourselves. A, a person who doesn't see something greater than themselves, they are more like narcissists. You know, that it's all about them. And, and the reality of life is this too, that, you know, when we're uh, growing up from our youngest years, as I showed you, my fourth grade teacher there, that uh, you're learning to be independent. You're learning to make your life work for you. You're learning to do it yourself. Um, you're learning to be your own authority of life. And you're learning to fix problems by yourself and becoming a creative or, or a, a functional human being on the planet or a citizen or whatever you want to call it. But having a righteousness greater than ourselves is really critical. Something more powerful than ourselves. This is the way that we were designed. And this is what we see going on with John the Baptist. We see him struggling now because he sees, in a sense, the greater uh, becoming to his level and saying, now I want you to be baptize me. I'm going to put myself under your authority of what you're called to do, is what Jesus was saying to him. This is a problem. We see this problem come up again with, uh, uh, in John with the, the, the washing of the uh, disciples' feet. They don't want to do this. You know, he's showing them this is what servanthood is about. So they're um, saying that I just can't do that. Now, I don't know how you feel about this in your own life. You know, is it hard for you uh, to have somebody put themselves under you who you believe that is above you? Um, is, it, is it hard to get that issue right? If it's hard for you to do this, it's a good sign. Because it shows that you have something greater than yourself. And that, that is incredibly important in this life. Because it, it gets us to a place of opening to learn and receive. Because if you don't have a righteousness greater than yourself, if there is no one above you, then what the, the, the alternative often for many people is to become self-righteous. You know, to play the God role. I am the highest authority of my life. I have my rights. And it's all about me. And I do what I do because I say so. There's nothing that's outside accountable. Now, there, people struggle with all the different levels of this. You know, there are people who uh, believe that they could not get a job to work for somebody because they can't deal with someone being above them. So they have to be their own boss because they can't handle being told what to do. They can't handle um, authorities outside of themselves. But the reality of life is there's no escape. That... Uh, we, we uh, are drawn towards relationships, and when we're drawn towards relationships, somebody's going to be above us. Even if you start your own business, you're going to be accountable to your employee or to your uh, customers. And to find out you're accountable to your employees, because if they're free, they'll quit. They'll, they'll fire you. <laughs> having a purpose, having something greater than yourself, having a righteousness above yourself is a critical issue of this life. So John the Baptist is getting it right, but it's clashing when Jesus shows up because he sees that Jesus is greater than himself. And so what does he do? 
Jesus has to answer him and say, no, I need, you need to do this, and you need to do this to fulfill all righteousness. So Jesus got righteousness right for us in his baptism. Now, this throws a lot of people off. They're thinking, well, gee, baptism is for people who are sinful. Baptism is for people who make mistakes. Jesus doesn't make mistakes. Well, what's going on here? But Jesus says, this is the way it's going to be, John, okay, to John the Baptist, that let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness, then he consented. So he says, I need to do this to fulfill what I've come onto the earth to do. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending on him like a, 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 like a dove, and coming to rest on him. So why was Jesus baptized? Jesus was baptized to give us what we need. What we need is someone to live and give us perfection. So fulfilling righteousness. And now this is where the key issue comes together with what God is trying to do on the earth. He is giving us righteousness the way that the world sees it is if you are going to become righteous it will become by what you do and then the common mistake is that well i'll bring that before god and so god i'm going to obey what you want me to do so i can be good enough and that i will get my paycheck or i'll get my reward which i can go to heaven which is salvation by works well you can also turn that around and say hey no no i got the right answer to that and it's because jesus died for my sins which is correct but Christianity at its core is about what God gives us. Okay, so wh wh what's going on here? Is that the, 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 the big issue is that we're dealing with the incarnation. God coming down to the level of human beings. Jesus becoming like a man. He's becoming a man even though he's divine. And that there's the crossing of the wires here. Well, this is a great man. How can he, you know... How, how, how can uh, I put myself um, over him? But he's coming down to be like us, to give us what we don't have. Sometimes I like to look at it in a way of saying, well, it's like, you know, somebody who's not cutting it on a, a, a sports game and we can't win. We don't have what it takes to win. We get substitute. We get thrown out of the game. We take somebody else and put them back in who is Jesus who's going to win for us. So he becomes a man to bring us righteousness, to bring us what we need. So it's not just here in this act, but it's all through his 33 years of life on the earth. And this is a part of the gospel that doesn't get that much press, but it is incredibly important. If you're getting what we're saying here today, because this is something that we all need. We all want to feel loved and valued and important. We're looking for something that we don't have in life, and we can go out and look for it in the wrong ways. You know, that you can look for it in a sense of trying to gain honor with people. You can do it in a sense of trying to uh, build wealth that maybe some would admire. Some people say, well, I don't care what they have. Well, there are groups of people who do. <laughs> you can do it in the way you function, in your character, in your education, uh, this, this looking for, I, I do these things and that makes me okay. Uh, a lot of times we can go through life just going out trying to get this, trying to get this, trying to get this. And meanwhile, we have a God who just gave it to us, who has already given it to us. And so Jesus becomes baptized for us. To fulfill all righteousness. It's part of what he's doing for us. And this is what John had to learn. That we all lack righteousness. Nobody's perfect. The world says, okay, everybody, you all get it? No one's perfect. So we'll just all accept that. No one's perfect. With God, he says, no, that doesn't work. You need to be perfect. Where are you going to get it? That's why Jesus is here. 
God does not want us to waste our life trying to get something that has already been given to us. Already been given that we are declared righteous. And part of the way that this has happened is through the baptism of Jesus. He was baptized on our behalf. I know there are groups out there who baptize on behalf of other people. Okay? We can't find support of that in the scripture. But except for here. Jesus was baptized for us. And then, coming out of the water, God has something to say about where we can get righteousness right. He points us to where we can get righteousness right. And he says, Behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus gets righteousness right. So when we want to get to know who God is, when we want to get to understand who God is, we go to the one who got it right. God himself, Jesus Christ. So in other gospel accounts, you see Jesus lighting up in this event. Uh, well, we saw how a dove comes upon him, and, and that's where you receive the Holy Spirit through baptism, the presence of God. For all of those who would be baptized into the Holy Spirit, through their baptisms, he points us to Jesus. Jesus is the place who has the place to go to get life right, according to God. And getting life right is about what Jesus has come to give us. He's come to give us grace and mercy. He's coming to give us truth. Truth that we can't get life right on our own. We miss the marks of loving God and loving others. He gets it right for us. And three years down the road after he meets John the Baptist, after the baptism, he would die for each one of us personally. To say, let me pay the price. I'm going to pay the price for where you miss the marks of life. And you will be my dear children. And your heavenly father will be your dear father into the family of God. Righteousness, getting it right. Getting it right has to do with going to the one who has it, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's go to the prayers, okay? Now I'm going to ask you something here today. Uh, we have some prayer requests of people you don't know. <laughs> people I don't, well, I know a couple of them here, but there's a few. I think we have uh, maybe about 15 people to pray for. We're going to go right on through this. And if you'd like to join us and to just pray for these people that I don't know, that you don't know, out of love for, the, for God and for them. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are here and we've received the righteousness that you give. Thank you. And as your righteous people, we can come to you in the name of Jesus, as you call us to do about issues and problems upon the earth. And we bring to you people who are struggling, struggling with health issues. You know, we think first of Pastor Ted uh, in a community close to us who was on hospice. And we ask that your blessings would be upon him at this time. And uh, we think of Wally Long and Keith Creighton who are recovering from illness and uh, our medical procedures. And we ask for your blessings to be on their lives. We think of Virginia from Charlotte, North Carolina for himself and her son and her niece. We think of Hilda in Cleveland, Ohio, who struggles with her knees and for Danny. Uh, Brenda from Corpus Christi, Texas for Holden, uh, who has been in a bad accident. Um, for Catherine in Mount Vernon, Alabama, for her family and her brother especially. For Randy in Cheyenne, Wyoming, for type 1 diabetes. For Glenn in Houston, Texas, where he's asking for world peace and world health. Norma in Kansas City, Kansas, for reconciliation for her family for her, with her husband. Deborah for restoration and a breakthrough in her life. Michael in Laguna Beach, Laguna Beach, California, 
uh, for a home, food, and a job. Dennis, uh, whose family is struggling. Teresa in Hot Springs, Arkansas, um, who has financial issues. Cindy is asking for a spirit of discernment. And Christine in Webster, Massachusetts, for herself and her family. Father, you know all these people individually. You call us to pray and, and, and to call upon you on their behalf. So we do. We tell you about the things you already know. Father, by your mercy, by the righteousness of Jesus Christ that has been given to us and to them, let your hand be known to them. Let them see your hand at work in their life bringing healing where to be, bringing contentment where no healing will come. So, Father, into your hands do we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Amen. Okay. Very important to know that we are righteous, not because of what we do, but because of what God has done for us. So on your life journey, let the righteousness of Jesus Christ be your foundation. And I say to you, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor, give you and your life his peace. Amen. Thank you for being here today. Um, if you're just looking and searching about who is Jesus and what he's done, and you're just open and you're listening because of that purpose, um, hats off to you for being open. I'd encourage you to just stay on that, that uh, path that you're on if you're asking these questions about in your life, because I believe that they won't come from any human source, but God will reveal these things to you. If you'd like to check out more about St. Matthew Lutheran Church, you can do that at um, stmatthewchurchsonora.org and see our website. We have things on there we call For the Curious, which are just little snippets of different issues that we live in this life and how God brings us to understand uh, his cross and what Jesus has done for us. We have our children's corner there. Uh, if you want to be on our prayer request uh, with our prayer partners, you can do that too. I think we have over a thousand today uh, of people who will pray. Well, um, they said they would pray. There's certainly many out there that are consistent with this. We know out of the thousand. Anyway, God's peace be with you. Thank you for being with us today. Take care now, everybody.